most African e economies have developed some ways of dealing with these things. They know where to borrow if uh, the price of cocoa should drop drastically or the price of coffee or tea or gold or whatever. They know where to go. They know what to do often. What we haven't learned properly is uh, how to differentiate between different types of shocks. So the current pandemic that we have is a much bigger shock than any other shock an African economy has faced in the last century. And indeed, I should be able to go beyond that and say it's a much bigger shock than any economy in the world has seen. You know, uh, during the Second World War, the industrial economies faced very significant shocks. Indeed, all economies face significant shocks. But if they could tell how it was going to impact them as a result of whatever decisions they took on the war front. Today's pandemic has caused a shock around the world, which is a lot more severe and a lot more unpredictable in terms of effects. So nobody knows how long it is going to last. And nobody knows how it's going to affect various economies, the strongest of economies. Available data shows that Africa is still the region with one of the lowest incidence of infections and death in the world. We all know that. The number of people who have died in Africa is far less than in Europe and also in the US. So that's the situation that we have. And I show this uh, graphically here. So we've seen that uh, even though uh, we are dying, we are not dying at the same rate as uh, in the US or in other parts of the world. That may be a good thing, even though we also know that every life matters. So nobody should be dying, whether in small numbers or in large numbers, nobody should be dying. So it's our responsibility as uh, people, our responsibility as people who govern ourselves to ensure that uh, even with for small numbers, nobody is dying. Mm -hmm.